Hi, it's been a long time since we've read a story. I've got a new one for you today that I hope you like. It's called Owls in the Family by Farley Mowat. One May morning, my friend Bruce and I went for a hike on the prairie. Spring was late that year in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. That's fun to say. Snowdrifts still clung along the steep banks of the river in the shelter of the cottonwood trees. The river was icy with thaw water, and as we crossed over the railroad bridge, we could feel a cold breath rising from it. But we felt another breath, a gentle one blowing across the distant wheat fields and smelling like warm sun shining on soft mud. It was the spring wind, and the smell of it made us walk faster. We were in a hurry to get out of the city and onto the real prairie where you can climb a fence post and see for a million miles. That's how flat the prairie is. The great thing about Saskatoon was the way it ended sharp all around its edge. There were no outskirts to Saskatoon. When you stepped off the end of the railroad bridge, you stepped right onto the prairie and there you were free as the gophers. Gophers were the commonest thing on the prairie. The little mounds of yellow dirt around their burrows were so thick, sometimes it looked as though the field had yellow measles. But this day, Bruce and I weren't interested in gophers. We were looking for an owl's nest. We had decided that we wanted some owls for pets. And if you wanted pet owls, you had to find a nest and get the young ones out of it. We headed for the nearest clumps of cottonwood trees that dot the prairies, which are called bluffs out in Saskatchewan. The ground was spongy under our sneakers and it squished when we hit a wet place. A big jackrabbit bounced right up under my feet and scared me so much, I jumped almost as high as it did. Here's a picture. And as we came near the bluff, two crows came zooming out of it and swooping down on us, calling their heads off. Bluffs are funny places in the spring. The cottonwood trees shed a kind of fluffy white stuff that looks like snow. Sometimes it's so thick it gets right over the top of your sneakers and you get a queer feeling that you really are walking through snow, even though the sun on your back is making you sweat right through your shirt. We walked through this bluff, scuffing our feet in the cottonwood snow and stirring it up into clouds. We kept looking up and after a while, sure enough, we saw a big mess of twigs high up in a poplar. Oh, right, Bruce said to the two crows, which were swooping and hollering at us. If you want me to snitch your eggs, I will. With that, he handed me his haversack and began to shinny up a tree. It was an easy climb because cottonwood poplars have lots of branches. When he got to the nest, he looked into it and I yelled up to him, any eggs? Bruce grinned, but he wouldn't answer. I could see him doing something with his free hand, the one he wasn't holding on with, and I knew there were eggs in there all right. I watched, and sure enough, he was popping them in his mouth so he could carry them down out of that tree. We always carried eggs out of trees that way. The only thing was, crow's eggs are pretty big, and if you have to stuff three or four of them into your mouth, it nearly chokes you. Bruce started to climb down. When he got about 10 feet from the ground, he stepped on a rotten branch. Poplar branches are always rotten near the ground, and you have to watch out for them. I guess Bruce forgot. Anyway, the branch broke and he slid the rest of the way and lit on his seat with a good hard bump. All the eggs had broken and Bruce was spitting out shells and eggs all over the cottonwood snow. I was laughing so hard I couldn't even talk. When Bruce got most of the eggs spat out, he came for me and tackled me and we had a fight. It didn't last long because it was too hot to really fight. So Bruce ate a sardine sandwich to get the taste of crow's eggs out of his mouth. And then we started across the prairie again to search through other bluffs until we found an owl's nest. I guess we searched about a hundred bluffs that morning and never did see an owl. We were getting hungry by then, so we made a sort of nest for ourselves on the ground out of the poplar snow and the branches. We curled up in it and opened our haversacks. Bruce had sandwiches and a lemon in his. He was the only boy I ever knew who liked to eat a lemon. He said they were better than oranges any day of the week. I had a hard-boiled egg, and just for fun, I reached over and cracked the shell on Bruce's head. He yelled, and we had another fight, and we rolled all over his sardine sandwiches. We were just finishing our lunch when a wood gopher came snuffling along through the cottonwood snow. Wood, go wood gophers are gray and have big, bushy tails. This one came right up to us, and when I held a crust out to him, he shuffled up and took it out of my hand. Got no sense, said Bruce. You might have been a coyote. Then where had he been at? Heck, I said, he's got more sense than you. Do I look like a coyote? The gopher didn't say anything. He just took the crust and scuttled away to his hole somewhere. We picked up our haversacks. 
The sun was as bright as fireworks in the sky and so clear you could look right through it, like looking through a blue window. We started to walk. All of a sudden, Bruce stopped so fast I bumped into him. Looky, he said, and pointed to a bluff about half a mile away. There must have been a million crows around it. It looked as if the bluff was on fire and filling the sky with black smoke. That's how many crows there were. When you see a bunch of crows all yelling their heads off at something, you can almost bet it's an owl they're after. Crows and owls hate each other. And when a crow spots an owl, he'll call every other crow for miles and they all join in and mob the owl. We headed for that bluff at a run. The crows saw us coming, but they were much too excited to pay attention. We were nearly deaf with their racket by the time we reached the edge of the trees. I was ahead of Bruce when I saw something big and slow go drifting from one poplar into another. It was a great horned owl, the biggest kind of owl there was. And as soon as it flew, the whole lot of crows, crows came swooping down on it, calling like fury. I noticed they were careful not to get too close. Bruce and I started to hunt for the nest. After a while, the owl got more worried about us than about the crows, and away he went. He flew low over the fields, almost touching the ground. That way the crows couldn't dive on him. If they tried to, they would shoot right past him and crash in the dust. There wasn't any owl's nest in that bluff after all, but we didn't worry. We knew that nests would have to be in some bluff not too far away. All we had to do was look. We looked in different bluffs all afternoon. We found seven crow's nests, a red-tailed hawk's nest, and three magpie nests. I tore the seat of my trousers climbing to the hawk's nest, and we both got Russian thistles in our sneakers, so we had sore feet. It got hotter and hotter, and we were so thirsty I could have eaten a lemon myself, except that Bruce didn't have any more. It was past supper time when we started back toward the railroad. By then, we were pretending we were a couple Arabs lost in the desert. Our camels had died of thirst, and we were going to die too soon if we didn't find some water pretty soon. Listen, Bruce said, there's an old well at Halton Corner. If we cut over past Barney's Slough to the section road, we can get a drink. Too late, I told him. Goodbye, pal. Old sheik, I am doomed. Go and let me to lay. Oh, nuts, said Bruce. I'm thirsty. Come on, let's go. So we cut past Barney's Slough, and there were about a thousand mallard ducks on it. They all jumped in the air as we went by with their wings making the sound of a freight train going over a bridge. Wish I had my dad's gun, said Bruce. But I was wondering why on the prairies they always called lakes and ponds sloughs. I still didn't know why, but that's what they're called in Saskatoon. There was one big bluff between us and the Halton Corner. It was too far to go around it, so we walked right through it. Anyway, it was cooler in among the trees. When we were about halfway through, I spotted a crow's nest in a big old cottonwood. Bet it's empty, I said to Bruce. But the truth was, I was just too hot and tired to try and climb any more trees. Bruce felt the same way, and we walked past. But I took one last look up at it, and there, sticking over the edge of the nest, was the biggest bunch of tail feathers I ever saw. My heart jumped right through my throat, and I grabbed Bruce by the shirt and pointed up. It was a great horned owl, all right. We kept as quiet as we could so as not to scare her. And then we looked around the bottom of the tree. There were bits of rabbits and gophers and lots of owl pellets. When an owl catches something, they eat the whole thing, bones and fur and all. Then after a while, they burp and spit out a ball of hair and bones. That's an owl pellet. By gang, we found it, Bruce whispered. I found it, I said. Okay, said Bruce, you found it then. So how are you going to, how about you climbing up and seeing how many youngins are in there? Nothing doing, old pal, I replied. I found the nest, so if you want one of the owlets, you climb up and have a look. Neither of us was too keen to climb that tree. The old owl was sticking close to her nest, and you can't always tell how fierce an owl's going to be. They can be pretty fierce sometimes. Say, said Bruce after a while, why don't we just leave her be for now? Might scare her into leaving the nest for good if we climbed up. What do we say we get Mr. Miller and come back tomorrow? Mr. Miller was one of our teachers. Bruce and I liked him because he liked the prairie, too. He was a great one for taking pictures of birds and things. We knew he'd be crazy to get some pictures of an owl, and Mr. Miller never minded climbing trees. Sure, I said. Good idea. We went off to Halton Corner and got a drink of water that tasted like old nails out of a broken pump. Then we walked on home. That night, I told my dad about the owl's nest. He looked at Mother, and all he could say was, Oh, no, not owls, too. <laughs>